Good evening and welcome to the People's Platform. There's a saying that democracy dies in darkness. So in a world that is in a war of narratives, where the truth is more urgent now more than ever before, how do we and how must we make the truth stick? To find out, we've invited to our studio Professor Zhang Yanchu. She works as the Deputy Dean of the Institute for a Community with a Shared Future at the Communication University of China. Good evening and welcome, Professor. Good evening. Good to have you here in Me the studio. Me too. And good to have you here in Sri Lanka. Yeah, it's my first visit. Okay, great. Very How impressive. Has it been? It's very impressive. I'm, I've been looking forward to visit this country for a long time. Because I have a lot of uh, you know students from Sri Lanka, they study in China in my university, mm -hmm. and they talk a lot about Sri Lanka, and uh, that's very an impressive. And then I visited finally. All right, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Good to have you here, mm -hmm. uh, Professor. You've written extensively on the editorial policy of going beyond uh, sensationalized journalism mm -hmm. and looking into the solutions. In your words, mm -hmm. if you could give us some insight as to uh, what constructive journalism entails and why it is important for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm very glad that I have this opportunity to uh, share my uh, you know understandings about constructive journalism because uh, as we know that uh, traditional journalism especially the more liberal media system they talk a lot about the you know watchdog journalism and investigative journalism which means the media the news media focus a lot on the negative stories mm -hmm. on the disasters on the you know problems on the you know um, challenges or crimes which make a good story, then people like to watch that. But at the same time, we find out those kind of, uh, you know, reporting, they just fo focus on the, you know, current news or focus on the problems. Uh, they create a lot of a negative, you know, mentality of the people and make people feel, feel you know, they're not confident in the society. And uh, so now there are a group of researchers, we started to talk about constructive journalism, that is, uh, quite similar like a solution journalism, which focus on the solution. It's a solution oriented, uh, which means uh, we're not only telling the story, the problems, but also try to tell what we can do. And uh, what about those sectors they involved? They can contribute to the issue, make the issue be solved, like poverty issues, like rural development issues, like health issues. So uh, I think constructive journalism is really a new paradigm for media to reconsider their you know, uh, news production uh, model. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, let's also speak a bit about the relationship uh, between the three organs of government, for example, the executive, legislature, judiciary, and the media is now known as the fourth pillar. Yeah. Um, so there needs to be a balanced relationship between the the state mm -hmm. or the government mm -hmm. and the media itself. Yeah. A positive yeah. uh, a relationship mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. proper ecosystem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speak to us about the importance of I this. I think traditionally uh, there is such a you know um, stereotype we think media should always watch the government and the government al always you know try to press the media or the relationship between the media and government are not that friendly but you know under the constructive journalism i think we have to re design the relationship between the media and government. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, media can watch the government under the, you know, democratic system, that's, uh, that's no problem. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you know, what media can contribute to the country's development mm -hmm. and to improve the people's life? Yeah. I think that is a dream for every media person when they receive the, you know, higher education for journalism and communication. But do you think all of them, they fulfill their dream? Uh, in the media, uh, along, uh, you know, they watch the government, but what their contribution to the social, to the national development. So that's a big, uh, you know, opportunity for the media to contribute. So um, if you follow the constructive journalism, media can play a very constructive role in, instead of just uh, watching the media, exposing the problems, the corruption, and they can do something which the people, they benefit. Mm -hmm. For example, I just learned your TV station, you have a grassroots development campaign or, in, or initiative. Yes, it's called Gum Medda. Yeah, I was very excited to see mm -hmm. that you made a very 
um, you know, good grassroots experiment on constructive journalism, which means you are not only exposing the corruption, the problem, you go to the, you know, the rural area, the most poorest, you know, village, try to find out what their challenges and what media can do. And the media might organize you know, the government, the local government, the, you know, the private sectors or the people, maybe the researchers, the universities, think tanks together to discuss those issues, what we can do with that. So that, that is a totally, totally a very excellent example for constructive journalism. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think media can also um, play a pivotal role in bringing communities together, yeah. especially in a country like Sri Lanka, which has gone through um, a, a, a past uh, which is a regrettable mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, ethno-linguistic mm -hmm. conflict that mm -hmm. took place over 26 years. Mm -hmm. Bringing communities of different uh, religions and ethnic backgrounds together, uh, I think that media has a key role, a mm -hmm. crucial role to play. How must that play out? Yeah, uh, you know, media um, is a public, you know, instrument it's not only uh, has a commercial, you know, uh, function, but also, you know, media is a public, uh, you know, a tool which may, uh, you know, work closely with the government to maintain the country, the national stability. So that's very, very important. And just like our family life, mm -hmm. if the husband and the wife and the children, doctor-in-laws, they always quarrel with each other, disagree with each other, and life could not be, you know, ideal. Yeah. So, you know, media should play a very constructive role uh, working with the people and try to keep a good balance, the uh, relationship with the media. I mean, ethnic group is a one uh, good case. For example, you know, different ethnic groups, they might have a different interest or uh, they have their different culture and between them they might some conflicts, a bit misunderstanding, but they also a lot of understanding and shared culture. So, uh, you know, for example, in China, we have a 56 ethnic groups and the, the media play a very key role, try to unite, right. unite those ethnic groups together. And especially one example during our you know, national uh, festival, that's our spring festival for the spring festival gala. And definitely they were their program, entertaining program that to show how the unification uh, of the, you know, different ethnic groups, they love each other, they support each other. Yeah. And also, you know, the media, like in China, they publicize a lot of uh, uh, Chinese government policy towards those ethnic groups and how we, you know, give them a special uh, policy to support the children's education, to empower the farmers, you know, uh, for their farming, agriculture. I think media can play a very positive role. So it's, it's, um, it's also should be the media's social responsibility to improve the understanding of the dif different ethnic groups. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Professor, an informed citizenry is of paramount importance uh, for the furtherance of democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of your key areas of research is also media literacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, instilling media literacy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a, a country's citizenry yeah, is yeah. so important. Yeah, yeah, for how sure. must the government ensure that this is done? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, media literacy, uh, it is also highly promoted by UNESCO for many years. And also many countries promote this such idea, media literacy. But now it is called media and information literacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, why UNESCO promote this, uh, you know, media uh, and information literacy project among the, along, uh, you know, in many countries. We know a lot of uh, Western countries and also developing countries, European countries, they also adopt this concept, media and information literacy, as their national policy, right. which is to empower the young people, the elderly people, and especially those uh, digital you know, immigrants, and to be capable uh, and, uh, to use the media. So they are critical and also creative media users. Uh, they not only use the media for their personal benefit, but but also for the you know uh, economic growth, so it's uh, it's it's part of the digital project for the whole country for the whole nation. So it's a literacy. You you, you see uh, you know the government um, like to improve the literacy for the general 
you know, population. But it's time to improve the digital literacy or media literacy of the general people.、Mm -hmm. I think that's also a very important to build a better media environment. Absolutely.、Mm -hmm. uh, I'd also like to talk about some of the negative aspects、mm -hmm. um, when we speak about、uh, the responsibilities of media. We also find that. We live in an era of misinformation,、mm. disinformation,、yeah. rabble rousing,、mm -hmm. causing divisions among yeah, people, of which is very dangerous.、Mm -hmm. How do we combat these yeah, trends? I think combating the fake news is an international challenge, especially under the you know social media age,、mm -hmm. and、uh, everybody they can speak up, they can publish anything they like. So. Um, how can make every you know、uh, me social media users to be responsible? One,、uh, that is a challenge. You know, for me, I give lectures on you know combating social media related with、uh, news literacy. So、uh, on the one side is、uh, you know content regulation is necessary. I think it's a great、uh, universally. The other is to improve the media literacy or news literacy of the young people, especially for them to know. What I should publish, what I should not publish, what、mm. I should share, what I should not share online. So that means, you know, media education,、mm -hmm. which is、uh, to to empower the young people on their media literacy, is so important. Many countries has adopt media literacy policy and education already, but I, I'm not sure the situation in Sri Lanka. Yeah, let's speak a bit about the importance also of. Um, fact checking. Yeah.、Um, how all media houses need to have、mm -hmm. a system of fact checking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.、Um, institutionally, but also how citizens themselves、mm -hmm. must be knowledgeable or yeah. aware、mm -hmm. enough、yeah. to know、sure. whenever there's fake news.、Uh -huh. They should have the skill set to check. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that they won't be fooled by、mm -hmm, fake news.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, verification of the fake news or verification of the news is a, it's a professional, you know,、um, practice for、mm -hmm. years for news organizations,、uh, for news media. You have to check the fa fact and to such as double check the sources, and that is a necessary that the must for the、uh, you know media professionals. But on this other side, on the social in the you know in the social、uh, on the social media,、uh, it's a it's a challenging for you know even some for some you know social media、uh, companies not not responsible for the content,、mm -hmm. so they leave the burden to the the users. And、um, that's why we stress the importance of the empowerment of the news literacy, or media literacy, or digital literacy of the you know general people, or especially young people. And、um, but at the same time, I think you know the education is important,、uh, such as in the U.S., in Canada, in British, and in Australia, in some European countries, including in China, we have carried out. Different kind of、uh, media education for many years. So students,、uh, you know, when they、uh, learn media literacy, news literacy, they know how to, you know, verify the news. And、uh, for example, they have, they have to double check the sources, or they go to the, you know, the researchers, and、uh, they find out whether there's overloaded language and、uh, whether. You know, there's a full. They 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 have to find tell the difference,、uh, the facts from opinion.、Uh, so those are very you know basic skills.、Mm -hmm. uh, there's a you know、um, a curriculum or there's some、uh, teaching materials on this.、Mm -hmm. uh, Professor, I'd like to connect、um, misinformation and disinformation、mm -hmm. uh, to politics.、Mm -hmm. We've seen how global superpowers、yeah. uh, have also used misinformation, disinformation, and technology、mm -hmm. to、um, influence the way the world thinks,、mm -hmm. the way voters、mm -hmm. think, and this has been an alarming trend. Yeah, speak to us about this.、Um, You know,、um, news media is、uh, it's not that simple. So we know news media is、uh, full of agenda setting. So、um, news is、um, is、um, it's not only always based on the facts. Some sometimes you know politicians, even some media, they use they use you know misinformation and disinformation to mislead 
you know, the people and to with a hidden ag agenda. So that's, um, that's you know, as a, well, we, we already know that. Um, you know, for example, you know, uh, the, you know, there's a difference between mis misinformation and disinformation. You know, misinformation is the information itself is a is a wrong one, but it's spread it without any malintention. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, malice, damaging intention. Mm -hmm. But disinformation is a different. The information itself is a false one, but people still continue to spread it. So that is to for the. Uh, either propaganda purpose for the to make a profit mm -hmm. or to you know improve their party's influence or to destroy their you know potential opponents you know influence so uh, it is sort of a tool as a you know uh, campaign sort of a campaign so i think that's why we have to educate the people to understand mm -hmm. you know disinformation is an information war it's part of the action of information war, and it is also part of the we call it cognitive warfare. Cognitive warfare. Cognitive warfare. Mm -hmm. So uh, it it is a kind of a measure used by some parties, by some country, by some media, to to you know to make damage, or to damage the other country, the other party, the other company. So that is serious problem. I think it related to media ethics, but also related to, you know, it is uh, it is cognitive warfare. It's it's there. All right, uh, we're going for a short commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, we're in conversation with Professor Zhang Yang Chu, mm -hmm. Deputy Dean of the Institute for a Community with a Shared Future mm -hmm. at the Communication University of China. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Zhang, mm -hmm. um, we spoke about cognitive warfare. Mm -hmm. I have a related question for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, we see instances mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka, but also across the world mm -hmm. of um, Places where the law is being weaponized to undermine democracy. For example, there are certain laws that are most common, commonly used to stifle dissent, mm -hmm. to stifle um, freedom of speech. For mm -hmm. example, in Sri Lanka, we saw instances of the, free, uh, the Prevention of Terrorism Act mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. being used, uh, the ICCPR Act mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. used. Mm -hmm. um, how dangerous is this for democracy? So um, uh, let's take internet for example. Uh, it seems that um, under the you know democracy system or under the you know uh, free expression, uh, free uh, you know free media expression, and it seems that everybody can speak up on the internet. But as you know, that it creates a problem like fake news. And um, that's why online there are a lot of fake news. When we see there are so many online fake news, it's not only make people make it for fun, but some very well-known, very well-made documentary and a very well-made, you know, even news program, but it's, uh, it's very biased. And um, they are always like to, make, you know, to uh, express something and to, you know, to criticize something else. So. I regard it as kind of a, you know cognitive warfare because they, they like to brainwash the others, and uh, it seems that they can express a lot of criticism. But at the same time, why they criticize the other? For what purpose? You know. So we have to be very careful over that. It's not always criticism. Media criticism means freedom, but uh, especially for the media user, they have to be you know, media literate to understand uh, so many, uh, you know, um, very well made uh, documentary or news program or short video online. Who made them? For what content? Why those kind of voice could be heard, not the others? Why uh, only, you know, those group of people, they can express the, the others themselves, but not the others? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like international news media is the same. It's always the Western media, they talk and talk, talk. But how about media from Sri Lanka to defend your country or the uh, third developing countries or third world to develop, to defend their country, to, to improve their country's, you know, image? I think um, 
you know, uh, it also comes to the concept like a public diplomacy. Uh, I think media should also play a very key role to help the country to improve your, you know, the general, you know, image of the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's um, talk about the situation mm -hmm. in China, yes. where the media is largely controlled <laughs> and managed by okay. the government okay. of China. Uh -huh. uh, do you think that is um, healthy for the Chinese economy, for freedom of expression, for um, people to share their own views and opinions? Yeah. yeah. You know, as a media researcher from China, I always give a lecture on this on this field on okay. how how to understand Chinese media. Right. But the fact is, you know, uh, China in the past forty years developed very fast, and uh, we, uh, you know, the 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 the, the country developed very fast, and uh, we uh, carry out a you know um, the poverty eradication campaign and. Um, and nobody uh, you know live under the you know uh, poverty line now okay. so that's a big achievement of china mm -hmm. but the, the secret is chinese media is not the so called you know western free media right. uh, so if you just uh, use uh, one criteria to 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 measure china that you are not a free media you are government control media i think that's a too sort of a narrow minded you know uh, mindset to talking that way. I will say, you know, the media in China work uh, very constructively with the government okay. and to one is to publicize the government's policy and the other is to work closely with the government and for our national agenda. For example, uh, we I, I really believe that Chinese media are doing constructive journalism. Mm -hmm. Even we don't call that name, but uh, we do the constructive journalism at, you know, different levels. So, um, I think that's also part of the secret China developed very fast because the media work with the government closely to support the government to maintain the you know the 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 the, the, the social stability okay and that's very important for the for the you know for the for the whole country to develop the other side is um, media play a very good link between the government and the people. So that's why nowadays under the concept of media convergence, highly promoted by Chinese government. So most, almost all the government owned media, they turn to be a media convergent, uh, which means all the Chinese uh, tr traditional media online. So they, s they try to serve, they serve the people and to, you know, provide a lot of, you know, platforms for the people to express themselves. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, you know, it, you simply use the term, you know, um, whether it's a government controlled or, or not, is a, you know, a standard to measure Chinese media. I, I would like to use the term, you know, governance. Mm -hmm. You know, media work very closely in China for the good governance. And even nowadays we talk about e-governance, smart city, and uh, like uh, our, you know, digital uh, uh, project. So the media play a very key role and a very, a very active role in that direction. Um, I, I, I should say, you know, in, West, in the Western society or even in international society, there are a lot of a misunderstanding for Chinese media. Uh, but the fact is, China developed very fast and media play a very key role. Okay. A government's take or stance on mm -hmm. a certain topic mm -hmm. isn't equivalent to the truth. Mm -hmm. The two can be uh, different, which is why it's important to have a vibrant media, mm -hmm. which is why it's important to have um, media outlets um, across the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't you think this is uh, of pivotal importance? Um, I, 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 I should say, you know, uh, media always say we are telling the truth. It okay. seems that telling the truth is the top standard for the media. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think the problem is, is the media just tell part of the truth, not the whole truth. For example, the critical media, they just tell the, you know, the problems, the troubles and the disasters. They are telling the truth, but only part of the truth. But how about the other part? How about the people they contribute and they make, you know, a good contributions and they uh, contribute to their country. They sacrifice themselves for the community and they are some, you know, teachers. They help young children to develop. So 
when you mention about choose, it's a, also like a negative story, the choose of the negative things. Uh, what about the choose about the positive things? Mm -hmm. So uh, it really um, matters for us to define the choose. So, but telling choose is, uh, is uh, important. But which part of the choose? And also, when we're telling choose, who will be responsible for the effect of the choose? Mm -hmm. So that's, we talk about some concept like development journalism, to, uh, peace journalism, like uh, solution journalism, like participata partici participatory journalism, and constructive journalism. I think um, that's why I think it's time for media and the media researchers to expand our attention, our knowledge, our understanding of the media's role or in the society. As an academic, uh, you are familiar with this concept of the dominant narrative. Mm -hmm. um, how, how important is it for us to question the dominant narrative to um, ensure that we move beyond myth making, which uh, sometimes the media is guilty of, the media in collaboration with the government mm -hmm. is guilty of at times? Um. Uh, it's it's really hard to say, um, you know, how the media work with the government to which to which extent. Uh, I, I I really want to come back to our you know the the constructive journalism as at the very beginning we mentioned, and like uh, you know in your TV station you do the rural uh, grassroots you know uh, development initiative. So. It's, it's, I think you, you give a very good example to keep a good balance with the, the, you know, the people concerned, the government, the researchers, the maybe NGOs, and also the media. The media's role is not work as a policeman or a judge, but instead is a facilitator, facilitator to, uh, to, 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 you know, to continuously to watch a one a issue and to be responsible for the outcome of the reporting instead of you are telling the truth and we we'll finish the, the story and you go away and leave the people to struggling over there. So I think it's, it's really time for us to, to revise, to rethink, to revisit the traditional news values or news practice. All right. Fantastic. Professor Zhang Yangchu, mm -hmm. thank you so much for being thank a you. part of this show. Yeah, my pleasure. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay Of course, here in of Lanka. course. I like to bring my uh, beautiful, you know, sweet, you know, experience to my Chinese, you know, friends and family members. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching us. We'll see you again on Monday with the single edition of the show. Have a safe weekend. Good night.